I've received some comments uh, about uh, the updated version of experiment number nine in Van Cleve's book. Uh, those comments were asking for the best way, in my opinion, to handle it um, in class um, during cycle two of week three science. So before we, before we talk about that, let's just review the, uh, the basics of the experiment. The purpose of the experiment number nine is to determine how Saturn can be seen through its rings. In order to do this, the students or the tutor before class uh, take constructs three pieces of paper, and then on each piece of paper at the end, uh, a solid black line is drawn. The three pieces of paper are then overlaid, one on top of another, and a straight pin is put through the middle, making really a pinwheel. The, the end of the straight pin goes into the, um, the eraser of a pencil, and then the students rotate the, the pencil and demonstrate a couple of things. They demonstrate first that, that they are able to be seen through the spinning pieces of paper and they can see through them. In addition to that, the black lines on the end of the piece of paper appear to be solid lines, solid circles um, that, that are moving. This, um, this correction and this update, um, in, in my opinion, is really a good faith effort to try and be very transparent and, and very explicit about what's happening. There is no new science that's been discovered that they're trying to correct. Um, in, in my personal opinion, it's not really an error in the text that we're trying to correct, that they are trying to correct. It is, again, just an effort to be very clear uh, about what's happening. Uh, as I read the, her explanation of this experiment, um, everything in the correction was implied, uh, and it made sense to me. My lovely assistant uh, reminded me that maybe, though, that's because of my love of science. And so uh, for those of you who uh, have read the correction and want to see the best way um, to, to handle it, um, I think there's some easy modifications you can make. Um, the last fact I want to say about the correction is that it was originally published in 2016. It was published three years ago, uh, and she says, at this time, Saturn cannot be seen through its rings. I'm not 100% sure what is meant by that part, but I, but I want to remind you that as Saturn and Earth are both orbiting the Sun, um, they're doing so at very different speeds. Uh, we take about one Earth year to orbit the Sun, and Saturn takes about 29 and a half Earth years to orbit the Sun. Further, both planets have a tilt on their axis. So what that means in practice is, as our Earth is going around the Sun much faster than Saturn is, the position of Saturn's rings relative to a viewer on Earth changes with time. In uh, their book, uh, Turn Left at Orion, the authors have a great illustration uh, that shows the relative position of Saturn's rings uh, to, from our vantage point on Earth in time from 2012 to 2024. Uh, and so, um, again, the, the, the position of the rings appears to change over time from our position uh, on Earth. So I think that's something that's important to keep in mind. Um, having said that, Saturn's rings are, are made up of billions and billions of pieces of ice and rock, uh, but there are vast differences, um, vast distances uh, between the different pieces uh, of ice and rock. And, be, and as they're orbiting um, the planet of Saturn then, objects can be seen through them. In fact, in its most recent mission, um, Cassini, the spacecraft, went to Saturn, uh, and there were some pictures taken that, that with um, careful positioning so that the Earth was actually in one of the outer rings of Saturn, and it's visible through Saturn's ring as a distant light source. Okay, so uh, the particles are, are orbiting the planet. There are vast, diff vast spaces between the particles which enable objects to be seen uh, through them when they're reflecting light. Um, the only objects in the universe that are luminous, that is, objects that are able to produce electromagnetic radiation visible to the human eye, are stars. The, our eyes are capable of detecting um, electromagnetic radiation from about 800 to 400 nanometers. If it's below 400 nanometers, that's the ultraviolet region. If it's longer than 800 nanometers, then it's the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So objects that are in that window uh, are objects that we're able to see. And so when we're looking into outer space, then the moon, um, asteroids, uh, the other planets, none of these things are luminous. They're not making that light. They're merely reflecting light. They're reflecting light of the nearest star, that is our sun. Uh, and so... Uh, as we're then looking into outer spaces, we're looking at the rings 
of, of Saturn, those, uh, those billions of particles are moving and orbiting. They are reflecting light back from uh, the sun. Um, and they're so far away, our human eyes aren't able to see the individual particles. And that's also sort of implied in her explanation. Um, but at its closest point, Earth to Saturn is still more than 700 million miles away. And so uh, none of us uh, are thinking that an observer here on Earth is able to see two pieces of rock moving around an object that's more than 700 million miles away. And that's a true statement. Uh, we certainly can't. In fact, the Cassini spacecraft, even as close as it got to Saturn, wasn't able to provide that kind of optical resolution. Um, so the purpose of her correction is to clarify that optical resolution and the reflection of light uh, the lack of optical resolution and the reflection of light are what make the Saturn's rings appear to be solid bands. Um, again, very subtle details. Use your own best judgment if you want to even bring that up. Um, certainly not, in my opinion, to the ABC Darians. Maybe some of the master students would benefit from it. Maybe some of the parents uh, would be interested in it. If you do want to modify your experiment uh, to talk about resolution, talk about this, I think it's easy to do so. Take your strips of paper. On the outer edge, I would still put your black line. And then uh, below it, though, I would put two dots. I would try to make them about a quarter inch in diameter, uh, and I would space them out maybe maybe a half inch apart and, and spin those and see, uh, and see uh, what kind of an effect that has. Uh, the students uh, might enjoy it if you're going to discuss uh, this correction. I hope uh, this video helps.